G'day everyone, Ben here again. Just wanted to show you a thing or two. Today I'm going to be showing you how to dry fit a door. That's taking taking a, a brand new door and putting it, fitting it to an existing frame, which can be all sorts of funny shapes. So first thing you do, take off the old door. Start by cutting around the old hinges with a Stanley knife, just to break the bond of the paint, so that it doesn't rip out any bits of timber. Then you want to uh, beat the paint out of the screws that are there. Um, the flathead screwdriver if that's what's there. Uh, otherwise you have to use a Phillips head and just give a little tap just so you can get the, uh, the driver bit in there on your drill so you can take those screws out. And then just uh, take that off ever so gently. Now what I'm doing there is uh, I'm fitting 100 mil hinges to this one. The old one had 85 mils, so I'm just scoring some lines around uh, where they overlap, and then just chiselling out uh, the difference there. So that the new 100 mil hinges uh, will fit in the in the new pockets or the existing pockets that are now being enlarged. I'm just going to take out the striker plates from the old one. It had a combo set there. I'm going to be fitting a mortise lock to this one. Uh, same as what I uh, showed in the last video, how to fit that. Next you want to measure, um, or you want to see where the handles may clash with the uh, each other, the screen door there. So I'm just marking that, making sure they don't run into each other. Measure the top, and then you want to measure the middle and you want to measure the bottom. Those three measurements could be very different. Um, and I'm writing that down on my tape, using it like a little whiteboard. So measure the height as well, both sides. See if there's any difference there. And also you want to measure the diagonals um, to see if it's square. So by measuring the diagonals, you can work out if there is a difference. And uh, I write that difference down um, on my tape measure. Also look at the sides to see if there's a bow or where the bow is. And by looking at my tape there you can see I've got a 5 at the top there that's indicating how much out of square it is and also a curve on the right hand side there showing what side the bow is and which way it's going. So that 819 in the middle is wider so it's bowing about 3mm in that direction. So what I'm doing here is I'm just looking down the length of the door just to see which way it bows. It's a timber door, they all have a little bit of a bow. Um, and so I'm just flipping it to make sure it fits uh, the door jam there in a complementary direction. Just marking the top, the middle and the bottom according to those measurements and also the diagram that you saw on my tape. And there I'm marking that 5mm difference uh, that you saw. So taking 5mm for that corner is nothing uh, across the top to give me that 5mm difference. So this is a special little jig that I use for cutting doors. I made that uh, just out of some aluminium and plywood. I can show you how to do that on another video. So I just got that clamped on there and uh, just trimming that side Obviously going to have to restain the sides that I trim. So just readjusting there, following those lines to give me that bow out in the middle, as indicated by the uh, 819 in the middle and that bow that you saw uh, on the right hand side of that diagram that I showed on the uh, tape. <coughs> Obviously cutting the top there, don't need to say too much more about that, except to say that uh, it's important to score across any grain that you're cutting across, and that's what I was doing there with the knife, it's just running the blade just alongside that jig, just to make sure that when the saw blade comes up through that timber it doesn't uh, smash through and splinter uh, the uh, finished surface at the top. So 
So now I'm just using the, uh, I'm just marking the uh, height. Now that I've got the angle correct across the top, I can now mark the bottom according to those measurements which I had worked out. I'm also cross taping that just to double check that the difference from corner to corner is equal to the difference that um, I measured. If there's ever a time to change the height of the door, it's now. Um, because we don't want to cut too much off of this door, otherwise it's going to be very hard to adjust afterwards without made it, making it noticeably shorter. Um, it wants to be a tight fit, but it wants to be a functional fit too. And you don't want to have to bring it in and out of the uh, door frame too many times, wasting time. But you want to try and get it right first time. There we go, just plonk it in. It should just slide right in. In this case, so there was something that I, I didn't uh, perceive immediately, and that is that the top of this door frame bows down by a good amount. I think it was probably about two or three mil bow down, so it was actually quite a tight fit. So I was able to just pretty much just push it in and just wedged itself automatically in there. Otherwise, you would have to put a, a wedge in there just to hold it in place while you mark any adjustments that need to be made uh, to the door. So I've just done that across the top there, just put a few little marks. It's got to be planed in the middle, a little bit of a bow down in this one, a bit of a bow jangles. And uh, marking there the height of the handle and marking the height of the hinges. So just going straight off the frame there, that uh, can tell me exactly where I need to be coming. Oh no, I'm being watched. The pressure. That doll was watching me the whole time. Anyway, um, yep, just marking the bottom there, just making sure that it's a nice even uh, gap along the bottom. About three mil is what you want to aim for. Um, and you want to sort of aim for about two or three mil along the, the handle edge as well. And then just take it out, take it back to the uh, to the uh, saw horses and just trim off those adjustments um, fit your handles and hinges um, it might be worth noting as well something I like to do when I'm using my saw to cut the edges of the doors I like to put it on about a, a two degree angle so just to give it a bit of a bevel so that there's no chance that the leading edge will get jammed um, just so that the inside edge looks like it fits nice and tight and the front edge, like if the door ever swells over time, um, the, the leading edge, if that ever jams and you try and rip that door open, you could rip a chunk out of the leading edge of the door. So I like to put a bit of a bevel on it. Also it gives me uh, a greater chance at having it look tight while at the same time leaving the leading edge very free to, to miss um, the jam. There's that nasty old bow in the top of the door frame that I'm now putting into the door. It might seem drastic, but the fact is when you have a door that follows the line of the jam perfectly all the way around, uh, people can't even notice that there are bows um, and uh, misshapen parts, you know, within reason. But uh, yeah, the tighter the fit, uh, then the less noticeable those misshapen things are. <coughs> so just put a few packers on the floor just to bring it up to uh, about the right height so that when you put your door there to screw in the top hinge it's going to be pretty close uh, to the right height. I've already I've cheekily edited out all my fitting of the hinges and the handle there just to show you the process of dry fitting. But this is the test, this is the big test, is it going to fit? Let's see. go 
fits like a glove. I'm just cribbing the, the bottom hinge across just a little bit just to make sure that it, it's an even gap on the, on the handle side there. Well that is the end of this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, really hope that uh, if you're looking for little clues on how to do this sort of thing, that this helped you. Hopefully I'll see you again next time.